Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be talking about the first half of my week number 40 of 2024. <coughs> Let's have a look. So, you know, I did actually, uh, I, I pr obviously I pre-wrote this week, like I did, I started pre-writing my weeks last week and I really liked it and it really worked out. But, uh, you know, this week I've not really followed it that well. I have followed it slightly, but maybe 50% of the time I followed it. Um, the reason for this is I feel I feel like if you train jiu-jitsu with a cold, you're a dickhead. Like I feel guilty going training with a cold, especially in like peak comp season when your training partners are training ready for a big competition coming up. But at the same time, if I miss training for a cold, I feel really guilty as well. So I feel guilty both sides of the coin. So it's kind of a tricky one. Uh, but I think I feel slightly more guilty going to training with a cold. Because then your mates are looking at you. You're like, you're talking, like you sound like you've got a cold. And they're thinking, I'm going to get sick now. And this cunt's just, come, just gi giving it to me. If I ever own a gym, I might give people like part of their membership fee back for the month or for the weeks they take off if they have a cold especially around comp time because that's, that's in my mind too it's like, oh my, all this money I'm spending at this fucking gym I haven't been there in a week now I haven't trained Jiu Jitsu in a week minus the competition on the Saturday which doesn't really count but yeah I mean I, st I stopped training originally because I hurt my foot a little bit and I had a competition on Saturday and then just before Saturday I picked up a cold and uh, I wasn't going to go training for the first... I wasn't going to go training until Wednesday anyway, to be honest, because I injured my ankle. But, yeah, I mean, I'm just making excuses as to why I haven't followed my daily log. Uh, yeah, so... I mean, yeah, I think it'll probably get better the more I, I do this, because I've sort of written this up and it hasn't exactly been sustainable. Like, for example, there might be two long between meals and I'm really hungry and then I go and get a meal and then once I've had the meal then I'm obviously too full for the scheduled meal so I'm like oh I skipped the scheduled meal <laughs> I have allowed a, um, a cell underneath each cell allowing for edits to see like what I did differently from the day and on Tuesday I did almost everything differently <laughs> so I might as well have not pre pre-organised the day anyway but um I remember last week I stuck to it really well and uh, it felt good. So I want to do that again. I'm not going to give up on this. And uh, it's, just, it's, it's down to, of course, I'm not going to skirt around it. It's down to discipline and it's down to um, being more detailed with the tasks in the cells. Because I'm too vague and I sort of get to that time. Like, oh, it's time to study... Uh, fats for example in macros it's time to study fats and then I just like what do I do um, if I be more if I say I don't know prepare an educational document for clients to learn about macronutrients sp specifically fats in their diet or in their daily calorie intake then maybe I'm going somewhere if I just say study fats it's too vague so I'm getting there. Because last week I just put work. Now I put study facts. Just a little bit more specific. But I think I need to be even more specific. Uh, yeah. And then there really is no question. Oh, it's 3 o'clock. I need to do this. Um, I have deleted Instagram off my phone. And that has been true for a long time now. Um, but the problem is my cookies on my computer, I press I on the URL and I go to Instagram. So it's the same kind of reflex. If I start to struggle whilst I'm doing some work on my computer, I'll press I, enter, and I'm on Instagram. I'm scrolling. Or YouTube Shorts is another one. So I need to do constantly do it. But I've actually deleted the cookies or, or the, uh, the pre, the saved I Instagram. I've deleted that from my browser, so that should make it harder. I just need to be more conscious of when I'm going on garbage YouTube shorts. I did actually schedule times to go on socials and short form content for like 30 minutes a day. But, you know, whenever I get to it, I'm like, oh, fuck it. I just skip it because I'm like, I don't want to consciously 
go, oh, it's time to go on Instagram Reels. That's so shit. I'm going to spend 30 minutes on short-form content brain rot. It's like, whenever I get to that cell, I'm like, I don't want to do that. Which is so funny because, yeah, you schedule time to do it and you don't want to do it. Yet, whenever something's difficult, you always subconsciously go back to that. But it's not like, oh, I fancy some Instagram Reels. <laughs> no. It's so odd. The, those fucking wizards that have engineered this into our brain. Fucking hell, they need to be shot. Anyway, anyway, so Monday, I, I think uh, I slept in actually longer than I originally planned to. But I thought, oh, it's okay, my ankle's healing. Which is, you know, you know that's, not, that's not completely unforgivable. I had four hard-boiled eggs of two slices of toast with coffee. And then I did... Uh, Oh, I did the journal for the Sunday. I did that on Monday morning. or well, actually afternoon, 12.30. <laughs> and then I sorted all the information with the... Uh, I needed to give some information for the restaurant that I trialled at last week. I sent them all the information they needed. And then after that, I planned the week because I didn't do it on Sunday. I think now I'm going to plan half a week at a time. Like Monday to Wednesday and then Thursday to Sunday. Um, because doing it all at once is like... It doesn't allow for much spontaneity. Like if somebody wants to go out for lunch with me or go out for a coffee, I'll ha I can't really say yes if I want to follow this to the exact minute um, because I don't really have any time. I have some time on Sunday, but that's it. Um, so if I do half and half, it will allow for some of that. But at the same time, that's a good thing. If I say no to enough social things, I'll have more time to work on my, my knowledge and my business than... Then I could do as much social stuff as I want later when I actually can sustain myself money wise. But, um, yeah, my dad wanted me to run an errand at like 3 30. I got on my bike to go to this fucking farm, like a 20 minute bike ride away from me. And the, the sidewalk, the pavements were super narrow. And I ride my bike there. My ankle still hurts a little bit. I pick up like four bags of, uh, chicken and turkey mince and it's quite heavy and I put it on the handlebar of my bike and I have to counterbalance the entire journey on this tiny pavement and I'm thinking I'm, I can't help but think why the fuck couldn't my dad's girlfriend have done this in the car obviously I've given my car in now I don't have a car anymore I can't drive their car because in the UK each person individually needs to be insured on a car and they've got quite a nice BMW so me being a young man to be insured on a BMW is very expensive. Um, so we can't do that. So I'm like, why didn't she? It would literally take her like 10 minutes to do this. But it's going to take me like 45 minutes. And it's very dangerous. But I was like, fuck it, whatever. At least I'm getting outside today. So I uh, did that task. Came back, had some Cheerios and coffee. And my... Uh, <laughs> uh, so my dad's girlfriend's grandson was around he was a little kid and it's not his fault but like he's at this rate he's gonna grow up to be such a little twat because every time he asks for something everybody rushes to get it for him and uh he was just about to have his dinner i took out the box of cheerios because i wanted some cheerios i'm a fucking grown man i can eat what i want um and then he looks at it and he goes cheerios cheerios so fucking this kid's great grandmother takes the box off the table I'm literally about to eat from it and she puts her hand in the cereal and I, I was like in that moment I think I burned about 500 calories trying not to fucking lose my shit like I mean I'm a very I'm, I'm very much a germaphobe and uh, like that just fucking really annoyed me you know, I'm literally about to pour myself some cereal. You take the box off the table that I'm, I'm sitting at and you put your hand in the cereal. Like, are you, are you any, are you in touch with like manners at all? Is that not like, to me, for me to do that, I would feel so rude. And it just blew my mind that she did it just so nonchalantly. And... Luckily, I could just put a little smile on. I don't think... I think I actually didn't have a smile. I think she could tell that it pissed me off. But I didn't say what I thought, which is probably for the best. But it really pissed me off. So she gave this kid my Cheerios. Put her hand in my Cheerios. 
And um, and I was like, yeah, great. Just before your dinner, just say no. You can't have Cheerios. Wait for your dinner. Your dinner's about to be served up in five minutes. Because, uh, yeah, that kid's going to be such a twat. I, I don't understand how people don't get that. I mean, maybe I'll get it when I'm when I'm a parent. But I feel like I I feel like I'd be good at just ignoring the crying. <laughs> Eventually, it's got to stop, right? Like if your kid's asking for something that you know is not good for them and you can't give it to them, they'll cry for a bit, just ignore it, and then in a few weeks' time they'll learn that crying doesn't get them what they want, so they'll stop crying. Is that right or wrong? I don't know. I've never raised a child. That's what I'm told, and. That's the way I plan to approach it, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, I just... Obviously, I'm talking about a child that's three years old. Like, a newborn baby, if they're crying, they probably need something for real. Like, they need to be, like, burped or something, or they need food. But a three-year-old, you know, you need to chill, I think. But then again, what the fuck do I know? I've never raised a child. Never even looked after a kid before. But yeah, that was a really annoying interaction. That was a very triggering interaction. Very triggering. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, after that, I went in and checked on my clients. Looked at all of the uh, sheets that I've given to my clients to fill out on the Google Sheets. We can both fill them out and see them. Um, sent some reminders for some of them to complete them because some aren't filling them out. So uh, sent some reminders. One of them I haven't heard back from, but that's fine. I've still got four more studying carbohydrates and then uh, on the Sunday when I was doing the PT with my client in the morning he mentioned that his neighbor was like a little bit of an entrepreneur and one of the things he does is sells he buys in bulk like sometimes what when people send Amazon products back that are pretty fine Amazon can't resell them brand new but they they bundle them up on pallets and just sell them as as a, as like a bulk thing to I guess retailers, and they're, they're like mystery boxes. Basically, you can be lucky and you can lose out. It could like twenty five pounds could actually be worth like forty pounds worth of merchandise, or it could be worth less. But I feel like the second I started looking at these mystery boxes, I was like, cool. Why don't I just make my own mystery box and fill it with shit? <laughs> and people keep buying it, thinking they'll get lucky, but I'm making like ten pound profit on each twenty five box. Why not? I could totally do that. Uh, but I feel like that would be illegal. I don't know. Would it? You know, they, they understand the, oh, yeah, maybe there'll be something in there worth 25. I mean, I wonder if there's a law, like, you have to sell a certain amount of mystery boxes that are actually above 25 pounds in value. But, yeah. Um, like, just a few minutes after looking into it, I was like, yeah, I just wanted to look at it, but it's just another distraction. I need to focus back on the, uh, the personal training and the fitness stuff. That's what I would need to focus on. Instead of constantly going for different distractions, which has been one of my big mistakes I've made growing up. It's trying millions of different things instead of just focusing on one. Uh, then I had a little window to clean my room at 7 o'clock. Had a little window to go on socials at 7.30, but I'd missed that one and went straight to make my dinner. Obviously, spaghetti bolognese, you know this. And then um, I just had a little bit more time to uh, finish up on studying carbohydrates. And then uh, do a little bit of Minecraft, 11 till, uh, t 10 till 11. I think by this point I actually finished my carbohydrate study and I moved on to fats. Um, very quickly into learning about fats, I realised that I was wrong about carbohydrates because I thought that fats were the easiest uh, food to get down or just consume in, in calories wise, but that's actually fats. So, you know, I'm learning. I also learned that fats are the most dense, uh, uh, calorie dense macro of all three. So, very interesting. Um, for breakfast, I had four hard-boiled eggs and two slices of toast with coffee. Bang. Um, and then I sorted through my uh, strength app, my RP uh, strength and hypertrophy, and uh, cleared up any unused mesocycles that I have. I have one friend who I was doing personal training for, and he hasn't even replied to my message in a week, so I'm just not going to do him anymore, because at this point, it's just disrespecting me. You know, I'm, I'm taking my time to make these programs for him, and he's not even responding, so... I say, mate, we're still friends, but I'm not doing this for you anymore. I'll just be straight up. I did actually wake up a little bit late on this day. I think an hour late. Um, See, so yeah, I had my food. I also texted the personal training lady to mark my fucking work, which she did, thankfully. And yeah, I did a little arm workout, arm and shoulder. I started my own arm and shoulder routine twice a week. 
It's pretty good actually. Feels good. Um, that was a mistake though to do it in the morning because I basically did some of those exercises exactly the same in the evening with my client because I do the workout with him. Um, then I carried on studying the fats in uh, in the macronutrients. I did actually have a call with my friend at 11, lasted about an hour, just talking about life. We we, we, we keep in touch. Uh, sometimes we see each other many times a week. Sometimes we don't see each other for weeks. Just sometimes we keep missing each other at training. We do different sessions and we haven't seen each other for at least a week. So I wanted to call him. There's some stuff I wanted to bring up too. Um, but yeah, called him um, after that. Jumped in, well, I jumped in the shower before the call actually, but then finished my workout because I had to finish early to call my mate. Told I was going to call him at 11. Um, had another coffee and Cheerios at like 12.30ish, which is not great. Cheerios, I need to get rid of those motherfuckers. Continue studying fats. And yeah, uh, check on my clients. I try and do that every day at 3 o'clock. So far I've been successful doing that, it's not that hard. And uh, yeah. I decided I also wanted to do one of my uh, traveling journals because it's been so long now. I think it's been three months. I think it's literally been three months since I've come back now. And um, I forgot this, but there's actually a gap, like almost a two week gap in my written bullet points that I have in my phone to like jog my memory on, on the travels. For some reason, there's like a just short of a two week gap where I didn't take any notes. So I was like, oh, I need to do this travel thing so I don't forget all the little details. So I did one covering the time when we went into the fucking jungle in an island called Borneo in Malaysia. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was an interesting time. And to be honest with you, I mean, I've, been th I mean, I've still been thinking a whole lot about this girl and just, like, trying to understand why she did what she did. And, uh, yeah, I mean... I don't really know how... To, I don't have the vocabulary to explain how I feel right now. Because it's different to just, I'm sad. Which is definitely the case when I got back. Parts of me are still sad. I still don't understand why she did what she did. But I guess I... I guess I'm less angry with her. I'm still very angry at the other dude for conducting himself the way he did. Conducted himself like a complete faggot. But... With her... You know, she wasn't being straight up, but she was saying the words that were enough for me to understand. And I just refused to listen to them, um, which is my fault. She, ne she didn't say any of this shit before we went traveling. It would have been cool if she didn't, you know, I don't want to say lead me on, but that's kind of the only other way to put it. I guess breadcrumb is probably more appropriate. If she didn't breadcrumb me all the way to travelling, then... I mean, it would have been way better. But once we were travelling, she did make it pretty clear every time I spoke about it. But again, she didn't speak straight up. She just used words and behaviour that made it clear. And it sh I should have... I should have just fucking quit. But... I just liked her so much that I dismissed all of it. I, I, I was basically, I basically was gonna keep chasing it until she said in plain English, "No, I'm not interested in a long-term relationship." Which I mean, yeah, that would have made things much easier if she if she just said that because I was very straightforward with the way I communicated. But um, <sighs> gross generalization uh, alert. Sorry in advance. I guess women just don't communicate that straightforwardly. And you need to you need to just look out for the quote unquote signs in the future and take it for what it is. I should have bailed long before I did. And I did eventually bail. I didn't actually see the travelling holidays to its full to the last day. So I did actually bail. But I should have bailed way before then. Fucking hell. But hey. It definitely was a fucking journey. Uh, I was going to say I had a good time. Mm, I guess I did, you know. I did and I didn't. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just fucked up. It's fucked up, but I think that this has been a very valuable experience for me. Um, 
Am I coping? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But I feel like I've learned a lot about life in that trip. And again, that's very cliche. Um, but it isn't even to do with travelling. I could have learned this same lesson if we if we drove around England, for fuck's sake. Um, but, uh... Yeah, it's just crazy. Fuck. It's just such a crazy situation. And I wish I could stop thinking about it, but it's really, really hard. So yeah, talking about that, uh, got it in my head again. It's, I've been thinking about it a lot today. I think about it a lot every day, to be honest. And uh, yeah, now just thinking like, like yeah, I was just, yeah, you know, she she told you, man. Basically, she didn't tell you in English, but she told you in <laughs> in in sign language. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I just yeah, yeah, it's just. Just makes me shake my head. And I wish I could have conducted myself differently. I wish I wasn't such a... A lustful simp, basically. Uh, and I'm very embarrassed, really. But, uh... I don't ever want to... Be that in love with somebody ever again. Because it just makes you so weak. And I never, ever want to be there ever again. Ever. Not even halfway there. I never want to be in that situation again. Which in a way is sad. Because it would have been really beautiful if, if it worked out. And and the feelings were reciprocal. And we, we were just completely in love with each other. That would have been wonderful. But that's just not the way it works. And I don't think I'll like anyone that much ever again. Which does make me very sad. And I, I'm slowly accepting that um, like relationships like... Our grandparents typically had, like my grandparents had, on, on my dad's side, had a wonderful relationship that ended by death. You know, I think, unfortunately, those are a thing of the past. And uh, I'm starting to accept that. Uh, but then again, maybe I'm too soon, you know. Uh, I'm not as old as my granddad was when he went, when he met my nan. My nan was quite young. I think she was 18-ish. My granddad was, I think, 24 so, you know, but I don't, in two years time, I don't really want to fucking go out with an 18 year old, because 18 year olds are fucking children now, they act like children, but, I don't know, that's a lot of what I'm thinking about, and it, it does hurt to think that, you know what, you know, there's no, there's no marriage that's going to happen in this day and age, like, when you start to accept that, yes, it's sad, but, it's just, uh, just the, the, the killing the expectation just helps. But it's sad that we have to do that. But it's just a it's just a sick joke that some fucking puppet master has, has orchestrated to push one night stands and pornography and all that shit. It's, uh, it's fucked up. But what are you going to do? That's the world. Well, it isn't the world. It's just the Western culture. There's some places in like Eastern Europe where I hear that it's completely different. So, <laughs> maybe we've got to go over there. Anyway, enough of this rant. It's depressing as fuck. But yeah, so, did the travelling journal about that time in the jungle. Uh, and yeah, just, just re-talking through it just makes, just makes me shake my head and look at the ground. <laughs> And then uh, after that, it was time to provide my bike to the PT's house. It started raining a little bit, but I was fine. Got to the PT's house, did a little workout. It was all good. Um, he paid me up front for three sessions then, which is cool. Rode the bike back home. Um, I, had the, I had my spag bow early before I left, actually, before recording the video. And then got some M&Ms on the way home. Had some M&Ms and a cup of tea, which was fucking delicious. Uh, whilst watching the boys, I should have been studying proteins instead, but I decided to watch the boys, which was not a good choice. Um, and yeah, played some Minecraft, went to bed at, uh, I got into bed at like half 11. <laughs> but I don't think I slept until like one, to be honest, that time. Again, like, honestly, I was watching the boys from the bed, so I haven't really been following this journal just because... You know, as soon as the, the morning falls through, you just you don't follow the rest. It's fucking shit. I'm so bad sometimes. Fuck. 
Today, uh, the Wednesday, woke up, had porridge and coffee. I planned to go to the pro class, as I said, but I felt like a dickhead because I, I had a cold. So uh, I think I woke up around 10, had my porridge and coffee. Um, instead, I looked at some crypto. I moved some crypto around, bought into ZOA today, about $70 worth of ZOA this morning. Um, so yeah, after doing the crypto stuff, jumped in the shower. I just think I just watched some YouTube bullshit. When it hit three o'clock, I tried to fall into my uh, to my regular routine because that is when I was going to get back from training and start working. Checked in on my clients, um, and then I played some games with my mate. Uh, it didn't take me that long to check in on my clients, so I I could squeeze in some. It didn't I didn't plan to fit games in with my friend, but it was a bit of a spontaneous thing. But it actually worked out. Because my next two squares were eat and socials, which takes up an hour. Um, and the socials I don't really do. I'm probably going to stop putting those in. And uh, after playing with my friend for about, I think, just short of an hour, I quickly made some food and then got on with the PT work. Just about on schedule, really. So there was no harm to no harm done. Uh, did my PT work, finished it, all good. Sorted out my testosterone test because I had these little landslits that they didn't draw enough blood to do a good test. So I had to message them asking them for some more. And then I was uh, continued up studying proteins. And then I put all of my studies together, my proteins, fats and carbs, put them all into one document in my in my macros, like learning for materials that I might send out. I didn't actually make it with the intention of sending out, but I sort of prepared it in a presentable way where I could send out if I wanted to. I more did it for myself just to gather the knowledge. Um, then uh, I was going through I actually had two clients today who had completed their their sheets of their week for what they ate and their activity so I quickly went through them and um, prepared their summary and prepared some questions for the call I called them both today um, then called one of them sorted out his stuff got the question, got the answers called the other one, did the same thing and now after this video, I need to quickly prepare their routines because uh, I haven't done it yet. Because I went and had spaghetti bolognese, watched the boys, and now I'm doing the journal. It's going to get late. I'm probably going to be a little bit late to bed, but I need to do these uh, workout plans for them before I go to bed. So yeah, uh, an all right half week. I could have done better following the journal, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, I messed up. But uh the next half of the week, I think I'll be able to follow it better. So, all good. Thanks for listening and I hope you have a successful next half of your week.